Now, what is up my fellow prod coders? Welcome to this video. And today we'll talk about how to properly configure your Node.js application with the Node Convict package, which is created and maintained by Mozilla. So let's just scroll down a little bit. And the important part is actually this part of the sentence. So oftentimes we get like external configuration in the form of environment variables. And what we want to do is we want to validate if this configuration makes sense. And we want to fail early in case we know that this is wrong and that this could lead to unexpected uh, behavior. And this is exactly what uh, this library node convict helps us with. So I created a little uh, sample application so let's just go into our config folder. So I created a simple configuration, nothing special. So the first field or the first config uh, value we can have is the environment on which we run on. So we can either run on local, on test or on production. And the default is production. And if you supply a value for the environment variable node env, then this default will be overridden. We'll also have um, a configuration for the port. So this is the port on which the server is supposed to run. Um, the default is 8080, but if you supply a value uh, for the port environment variable, then this will be overridden here as well. And as a last thing, um, let's just assume that we connect to a database and in cloud environments, you're often forced to use um, TLS to connect to your database, which is a good thing, right? Because your connection is secure. Um, but if you run locally, you might not want to use that. So that's why we have this environment variable database use TLS, which is a Boolean and which defaults to true. And in case you're wondering like where I get these formats here from, so Node Convict provides us with a list of um, yeah, formats per default. So these values here are supported out of the box. So you can have port, an integer, a URL, an email. And if you specify this as a format, then Convict will perform some validation. And if the validation fails, then your server will not start up. Okay, I also wanted to mention here that for each of the environments, you typically create like a JSON file. And inside this JSON file, you provide some reasonable defaults. So right now I don't have any reasonable defaults because it's just a dummy application. If you have a real application, you would have some defaults because you might have some different configuration for your test. Um, like it just might differ from your production um, configuration. Good, and what we can do now is depending on what environment we are on, we just load the JSON file. Right now, this will have no effect because we don't provide any values here. And then we validate our configuration. Good, so far so good. I also wanted to show you something else. So I have um, provided our application with two environment variables. This database use TLS, which I set to false just for demonstration purposes, and the port to 3000. So this 3000 differs from this uh, 8080, right? Okay, so let's just assume we provide some garbage. So we provide, I don't know, um, something like this, and we run this. And bam, you see it immediately fails. And it fails with a really nice error message because it says, um, hey, you said this is a port, but the port must be like an integer and it must be between zero and 65,535. That's pretty good. So if you supply a wrong value, the server will not start up and it's immediately clear what the issue is. Okay. And I just wanted to also show you something else. So you might also run into a couple of issues if you use uh, environment variables directly. And um, I just created like a simple uh, server. So yeah, I have this, 
I created like an express app and then I run it on a specific port. And I wanted to show you in what issues you can run if you use environment variables directly. So remember, uh, we can use, uh, like we set this database use TLS uh, environment variable to false. So that's important for understanding what happens here. So let's just say we pull our, the value, uh, whether we should use TLS or not, from our configuration or from the Envoi directly. So in Node, you can directly access the environment variable like so, by using process.env.database use TLS, for example. So I would just say, let's run this and let's just see what it prints. So first of all, we print out the two values we get, okay? So from our configuration, we get false and from our environment variable, we also get false. This is exactly what we expect. But in the next statement, you kind of see that the types of these two variables differ because our node convict automatically um, converts the, the value of the environment variable to the correct type because environment variables always have the type string. So if you pass like a value of 8080 as a default, like as an environment variable, you always pass a string and your application is responsible for converting this to the correct type. And um, that's why you have the use TLS, like from our configuration is a Boolean because convict automatically converted it. And the type of our uh, value from our end for directly is string. And now this might not sound like a problem, but it can have dramatic, a dramatic impact on your application. Because let's just assume somewhere where you connect to your database, you have some form of if statement. So you say, if I am supposed, to, I'm supposed to use TLS, then I will do some certificate magic to make it work. And otherwise I will just uh, not do anything and connect directly. So if we go to the last uh, console log, then you see, okay, if we use our value provided from our convict configuration, then um, this console log here is printed. And this is exactly what we expect because we also set this um, value, uh, this use TLS variable to false. And that's why expect we expect to end up here, right? Instead of here. But <laughs> now it's quite interesting. If you directly use the value of the environment variable, then all of a sudden it prints out true. So we end up here. And now you might be wondering, well, what's the point here? Like, why do we end up here? Because we explicitly set it to false. And the reason for that is, as I mentioned before, that the type of all environment variables is string. So if you have a statement like if false, then this will actually evaluate to true because JavaScript says, hey, uh, you gave me a string and that string is not empty. So that is true. So basically anything that is not empty as a string evaluates to true if you like put it in if statement here. So actually what we, what the system is doing is it says if string false is truthy, which is true, then attempt to use TLS to connect to the database. And this is like <laughs> some pretty interesting thing you might run into because when you try to run it on production or something and you kind of see, oh, somehow it, it tries to connect it to connect uh, to the database, even though I told it it should not or vice versa, um, then you can really run into problems, right? And this is also the reason why it makes sense to use uh, these configuration libraries like uh, node convict um, because from one, they allow you to do validation and they also convert the uh, configuration to the correct type. So in case if you're running on production, you would probably not have the problem because you use SSL anyway, but this basically applies for any Boolean configuration. So you can really run into problems if um, the type of uh, like, if you don't convert uh, the value, the string to the correct type. 
Yeah, and that is like yet another reason to use uh, like a configuration library like convict. So I would highly encourage you to uh, use something like that. There are also other libraries, but since this one is created and uh, maintained by Mozilla, I think it's, it's quite good. So uh, I can only encourage you to use it. And um, yeah, these were basically a few issues you might run into when you attempt to configure your application with environment variables. So thank you very much for watching. Um, please make sure to give the video a thumbs up. And also I have uh, set up like a link in the description down below uh, where you can leave your email and in case you want to have a say in what we do next on this channel. So every once in a while I send like an email along and you can have a say in what videos uh, we publish next on this channel. So again, thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so.